Howdy, welcome back. I'm Steven and this is FWP Reviews. Batman is a character that has appeared on the big screen in many forms and through many actors. He is one of, if not the most done superhero. Maybe not necessarily well done at times, but he is the most done. There are countless iterations, some good, some bad, very many bad. He's had bat nipples, shark repellent, and so much more. What is it that makes a live action Batman tick and what's to come? As I was rewatching the Burton and Schumacher Batmans from the 80s and 90s to get ready for Robert Pattinson's new Batman movie, I was reminded of something quite bizarre about these movies. At the time of release, before the subsequent disowning of all things related to the Schumacher Batmans, these were all supposed to be the same Batman despite being played by three people, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, and George Clooney. Since then, the popular notion has sort of become that the Burton Batmans are one universe and the Schumacher Batmans are another universe. But at the time, they were considered the same and it's an interesting concept to consider. I'll tell you why this is intriguing in this video, but first I'm going to look at the history of the live action Batman movies. Live action Batmans for our purposes started in 1966 with Adam West's Batman. This version of the character had both a TV show and a movie. He was the first real try at a live action Batman movie. This version of the character certainly looked a lot different from what we have come to expect from the character, but it was the 60s, so mostly understandable. In 1989, in true post-2001 fashion, Tim Burton took on a darker and more gritty version of live-action Batman. Starring Michael Keaton and one of the best superhero theme songs ever, this movie was flawed and edgy, but it was really enjoyable and an interesting take on this character. While this movie and its follow-up, Batman Returns, have enough edge in store that it's enough to surpass even the most horrifically disgusting writings on the bathroom walls of a middle school, they're still kind of enjoyable. A huge part of why these two Batman movies are so entertaining is because of their villains. Jack Nicholson remains one of the most interesting adaptions of a character that has been adapted to death since. Jack Nicholson plays this character with the perfect tone for the movie that we're watching. It blends seamlessly into the movie. For all the flaws and interesting tones of the movie, nothing stands out. It all flows together seamlessly. Everything is at the same level across the board. And that certainly helps overcome some of its more weird tonal elements because it never feels random. It just is the movie that you're watching. It's pretty well told as a whole and it's consistent and this remains mostly true for its follow-up Batman Returns. The same thing also occurs in Batman Returns for the villains with a handful of villains. The one that really stands out is Danny DeVito as the Penguin. He brings an appropriate brilliance and edge to the story. After supposed backlash on the Burton movies for being too dark and edgy for the chaos of the 90s, they decided to go a different direction. When the Burton movies received backlash for being too dark and edgy for the 90s, they were soft rebooted. Now where have I heard that before? Two years later, with a new Batman and a new director, Batman Forever is born. Batman Forever is atrocious and should have been the worst Batman movie ever released, but it wasn't. More on that later. With Val Kilmer doing a decent job as Bruce Wayne and Batman and Joel Schumacher being a relatively talented director, this movie should have been a hit, but it wasn't. It just sucked. It's all the worst things about the Batman character and all the worst thing about the 90s all rolled into one horrible package. It never knows what it's doing with itself and for a movie that is so chaotically random, it's incredibly boring. With all the bizarre and weird elements of this movie, you would at least hope it's interesting, but alas. Another two years after Batman Forever, Joel Schumacher returns with George Clooney in hand. Here, I fixed the problem. We got a new Batman. Little did we unfortunately know, Joel Schumacher was about to pull the craziest stunt ever and make a worse Batman movie than Batman Forever. Batman and Robin, without a stretch, is the worst Batman movie ever made that I can even think of, but it's also probably one of the worst movies ever made that I can think of. With all the things that were wrong with Batman Forever, Batman and Robin both finds new things to do wrong as well as doing the things that Batman Forever did more wrong. Warner Brothers, the parent studio of this abomination movie, was so scared of making another Batman movie after this that after making four Batman movies in eight years, they went on to make no Batman movies for eight years and refused to touch the character until Christopher Nolan picked it up in 2005. In 2005, when they picked up the character, Christian Bale took on the cowl, and this new version of the character was virtually unrecognizable to anything that had come past. Over the next seven years, three incredible Batman movies were released, two of which I consider to be some of the best movies ever made. After the release of The Dark Knight Rises in 2012, Christian Bale hung up the cowl, and in 2016, we saw a new version of Batman. 
Ben Affleck joins the fight as Batman in 2016's mildly disliked Batman v Superman. I think there were plenty of arguments against this movie's creative choices, but pretty much everybody loved Ben Affleck's performance. In true Warner Brothers fashion, Ben Affleck's beloved Batman never got a solo movie. He played the character a few other times, and he has one final scheduled appearance in The Flash, but that's it. Releasing in theaters in just a couple of weeks, Robert Pattinson will play an all-new version of the Batman in a standalone universe, which is directed by Matt Reeves. With Ben Affleck still having a couple of performances left to go, Robert Pattinson just beginning his career as Batman, and Michael Keaton making a return to live-action Batman in at least two movies over the next several years, sets up a very interesting prospect. With three active Batman, how far-fetched is the idea that Warner Bros. would get absolutely insane and think, let's do what Sony and Disney did and make a Bat-first movie? I don't think they would, but I also think that they would. And if they did, they would probably screw it up. These three live-action Batman are accompanied by the soon-to-be live-action Batgirl, as well as another standalone universe that features just the Joker. As much as this video was to be a re-examination of the history of live-action Batman, as I was re-examining the history of Warner Brothers and how we're setting up our future now, it is made clear that maybe we should put on our tinfoil hats for a minute. Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton will both play Batman in The Flash. Batgirl and Michael Keaton will both play versions of a bat character in Batgirl. We're already this close to a bat first movie. How hard would it be to suppose that in this all encompassing reset that the Flash is supposed to be that a bat first movie is spawned out of it? I hope not, but what if? With a huge slate of DC movies scheduled to release this year, I think this will be a very telling year for the future of DC. It could allude to a potential setup of some sort of multiversal malarkey because of Marvel's massive success, or it could be the end of all things DC if all four of their movies somehow flop and then they just give up because honestly, they've been trying very, very hard. Well, maybe not hard, but they've been trying a lot to make good movies and it's been slow. So I think after this year, DC's trajectory will become abundantly clear through the Flash movie as well as all of the other movies that are releasing this year. So we'll see where this goes. With that, let's wrap this nonsense up. Looking back at the history of Batman and seeing Warner Bros has a troubled history with the character and seeing now that there's also some trouble brewing in their studio with countless versions of Batman running concurrently, it makes me wonder if a storm is brewing. If this is completely untrue, it is what it is, and this is just a fun look at the nonsense that has become completely prevalent now in the present day, and that Warner Bros. will fuck up everything they get their hands on. I am incredibly excited for both the Batman and the Flash movie, so we'll see how both of those turn out. I think they'll be interesting at least. Time will tell if either are good, and until next time, follow my Instagram at FWPReviews100 for daily red reviews about the newest movies. With that, this is FWP Reviews signing off. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.